Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our Q&A session uh, this afternoon. We have got two really great guests. I've had a chance to talk to them a little bit backstage, and they are they're very animated. They're very fun. You're going to have a great time meeting these two Superman celebrities, so let's bring them up here. First of all, she was the uh, bad girl who's turned out pretty good, actually. Let's bring up Tracy Roberts-Lewis. Come on, Tracy. <laughs> guest did what uh, three super villains from Krypton couldn't do. He kicked the stuffing out of Superman. Let's bring up Mark Pillow. Thank you. It's great to be here. So you guys come to Metropolis often, do you? As often as I can. <laughs> this is the first time, but <laughs> I like it. Yeah, you guys are wonderful. Yes, everybody's been very sweet and very nice. So do you guys do a lot of uh, appearances and, and events and things like that where you get to meet the fans? Actually, this is the first time I've ever done one of these. Well, how about that, huh? You guys get the, get the premiere here. And the fans are I have been away from it for quite a while, so this is a lot of fun to get back in front of you and speak. It's been wonderful. Thank you. So is it what you expected? I mean, you uh, you haven't been here before. Were you, were you familiar with the fact that the town of Metropolis existed and the, the Superman celebration? Have you heard about it before, or was it the kind of news to you? I actually just heard about it recently. Uh, I had no idea. There was a museum, and there was actually a Metropolis, and I was pleasantly surprised. And I actually caught Jay Lowe's, or no, Jay, Jay Leno. I guess he was here a couple years ago. And right, I yeah, caught his guys come version out, yeah. of... <laughs> Give me an idea of what to expect. <laughs> and how about you, Margaret? You heard about I, Metropolis before? Until Neil Cole, the Superman celebration, brought it up with me. I, there he is. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. I really didn't know much about it, and uh, I'm sorry I've missed it all these years because it's been interesting learning about it and seeing all the enthusiasm for something that I did 25 years ago. It's wonderful for me to come back and relive a lot of the experiences. <laughs> Yeah, we appreciate you guys coming out and taking the time to talk to everybody. Uh, we do want to open up uh, for questions from the audience, so if people have any questions that they'd like to ask either, you can put your hands up and we'll, uh, we'll find out. Anybody? Yes, sir, right in the front row. I'd like to ask both of you, if you could take yourself back to when you, before you did the project, before you were inspired to do the uh, Superman 4, um, what was your thought about it? Wow, you know, I'm part of something that's got a huge fan following. Oh, no, 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 so that was my preparation for it. I was, it, was, it was a whirlwind. And I got there and went, what just happened? <laughs> so I didn't have all the time for reflection on this wonderful thing that was coming up. Thank goodness I was in reasonably good shape, so I didn't have to do as much to try and fit into that skin tight outfit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so a lot of, a few days of just, wow, incredible. Wow. Yeah, when I was first asked to come out and, and audition for Superboy, um, they, uh, they, they actually, they had the first season, and then, so I was familiar with the show from the first season, and then I was told that they were recasting the entire show, other than Stacy. Um, so when they asked me to come out and try out, I actually auditioned for the role of a nurse, just a day player, had no idea. And um, the casting director uh, came up to me and she said, you know, no, I, I have something else I'd like you to try out for. And I was like, okay, not knowing. She goes, they're actually casting Lex Luthor's partner in crime. And I think he'd be great for it. And I said, okay. So she bought me in front of Ilya, gave me 20 minutes to prepare for the audition. I went in, auditioned, and at the time, I don't know if y'all have seen the first show with Darla, she actually was introduced to the show as a stripper. 
<laughs> and they're like, so do you have a problem with the fact that you're in a strip club? And I'm like, this is a kid's show, right? <laughs> and they were like, yeah. And I'm like, so yeah, I can't get, sure, no problem. I'd love to do it. And um, I had no idea it was going to turn into what it turned into, but it was basically I was going to do one episode and it turned into four years. And it was four years, best time of my life. The whole cast, everyone was fantastic. Everyone was, we were one big family. We had barbecues and Lex Luthor, Sherman Howard, probably one of my favorite people on the planet. He is a very talented, talented man. Um, not a bad guy. No, he's not. Just, you know, just on TV. I'm not a bad girl either. I'm just on, just play one on TV. <laughs> So, yeah, it was great. So do you get to keep in touch with any of the, uh, the former cast members? Since all of this actually came about, um, I hadn't spoken with anyone since the show wrapped. Um, and then I met these two wonderful people, Rennie and Sam, from Superboy Homepage. And they just kind of got me together with, I spoke with Stacy. I was able to speak with Gerard. We haven't gotten in touch with Sherman yet, but we're going to hunt him down. Um, and it's been, and Ilya, you know, so it's been really, really great. This has all been such a wonderful experience, you know, it's been great. It's kind of like coming home, so, That's yeah. Nice. <laughs> uh, and, and I want you to answer honestly now, were you guys fans of Superman before you got involved? I mean, did you read the comics when you were uh, a I kid? Did. Yeah, I did. I, I, I grew up in Africa, and we didn't, where I was in Liberia, there was no television, so we had comic books, and I was a big Superman fan as a young man, so... All I had dreams through. of marrying him. Well, uh, <laughs> I think that's a sentiment shared by a lot of the ladies out here. <laughs> okay, do we have any questions out here? Oh, we've got a couple over here. We have our lovely okay, talented Supergirl now. helping us out. <laughs> Faster than a speeding bullet, we'll get over there to get your uh, questions. Go ahead, son. Okay, Mark. Uh, before you did Superman 4, did you see the first three installments of Superman? Oh, absolutely. Several times. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the first one, I was mesmerized. He was incredible. I thought, that is Superman. Yeah. Chris, and, he, and even when we did our, uh, our the fourth version, when he put on that outfit, it's amazing to watch the transformation. He just became Superman. A wonderful guy. So was it, was it an experience for you when you saw him for the first time? Because I, I know uh, Annette O'Toole tells the story about working at Superman 3, and she worked primarily with him as Clark, but when she saw him for the first time as Superman, it was just, there's Superman. Was it kind of like that? It was. And the first time I saw him, he was filming out at the farm, so he had on the Clark Kent plaid shirt right. jeans thing. Mm -hmm. And then to see the transformation, I, and I don't know if you realize when you watch the film that when he's Clark Kent, his, his hair is parted on one side, and when Superman is on the other. You see him differently. And to watch him in that chair getting makeup and just watching him change his persona, uh, oh yeah. I, I just stood back and decided, do you mind if I just watch? <laughs> so that was the first time that you'd worked on film? I had maybe walked by a camera in the background. That's about the extent of it. And I, But I'd been training in LA for years. But that was the first time and was felt completely lost. I mean, it really was much more challenging than I expected it to be, the technical side of the work. And uh, if we get around to talking about other aspects of making the film, I'll talk about some things that also made it very much a challenge. Well, uh, you guys, I mean, now granted, the budget for Superman 4 was a little bit less than the, the yeah. previous installments, but you guys are working on a TV budget with your stuff. And what was working with effects like for you on the kind of the quick schedule and maybe not such a high budget? Um, you know, honestly, we had some of the best directors and producers, and um, every year it just got better and better. Um, I don't know exactly what kind of a budget they were working on, but they they just did some awesome work. I mean, if you if you've seen the show, I, I I just I can't say enough about how much they put into it. Sixteen hour days. I mean, we worked sixteen hour days. You know, and we were on a tight budget because we knew once we were over eight hours and the executive producer would come around the corner and we're like, oh, we must be in overtime. Here comes Barry. <laughs> and he's like, get these actors out of here. What are you doing? It's just, but it was, you'd never know they were on a tight budget. You know, most of the, the show was shot on location, mm -hmm. um, shot basically with two cameras. Um, 
and yeah, it's just, you never know they were on the low budget. Okay. Uh, I've got any more questions out here? Maybe we've got another one in the front row here. Uh, my question's for Mark. Um, yes. What kind of physical training did you have to do prior to the actual shooting of the film when it came to the flying scenes and the fight scenes and stuff like that? Um, I had, I had been training, I, I, I'd met Arnold and, and Ferrigno and all those guys in the years up to that and lived in Santa Monica. So it was around that culture already. Um, and I trained a little Muay Thai boxing so I knew a little bit about the movement. And then as far as the flying, I skydived and I hang glide. So it was a feeling fairly comfortable being in a harness. And then it pretty much just trying to look like I was comfortable doing it and making it real. And it took a lot of practice. That actually in making the film, that takes the most time. It's all job. the flying shots in front of a green screen. There was months of that type of work. And it's retake after retake. And Chris's back in the end was a mess from holding that position. So was it, uh, so that was definitely the, the, the hardest part of the experience. What was, what was the best part? I mean, what do, what do you look back on and go, you know, that was, that was like the great day on the set. I really just kind of kicked back out. Yeah, uh, that was cool. Lunches were great. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting with Gene Hackman and just listening. The stories. You just see, you can sit for four hours and not say a word. Just stare at him and listen to him talk about, and, and Chris talk about things. Uh, it, was the, it was the coldest winter in 50 years in, in England. So moving between sets and it was, it was bitterly cold. I mean, those, those times when hanging from the wires outside in that Great Wall of China scene, and skin just completely blue, and the camera people asking, "Can we? Are we picking up blue on him? He's not supposed to be blue." <laughs> so it was it was cold. But anything just hanging 100 feet above the ground, watching all the all the fun down below, was <laughs> memorable certainly. Now, seeing as you were involved in the Superboy series for so long, the character is recurring. Did you have any sort of input as far as the direction that the shows took, or did you make suggestions or say, "Hey, this would be kind of a cool idea for an episode"? Did you get to do any of that? Um, yeah, I have not had a reputation on the show. Um, Sherman and I just we kind of went off on our own sometimes, you know, and we just, we ad-libbed a, a lot, um, and they would just, <laughs> there they go again, um, and I was also known as Last Line Tracy, because I always had to have the last line, whether it was written in the script or not, I was throwing it in there, and Sherman would challenge me, he'd say things, and I'm like, nope, no, I'm getting the last line in, and, uh, but they always kept it, and they were, that's what, that was what was great about the show is, they were so laid back. They really gave us a lot of freedom to do what we wanted to do. And they let us bring to the show what, what we wanted to bring to the show. And they didn't have any problems with that. So it was great. It was, it was fabulous. It was okay. a lot of fun. But um, Sherman, who plays Lex Luthor, actually wrote, if you guys come to the show tonight, Darla Goes Ballistic, he actually wrote that for me, um, which was very, very generous of him. Um, and several of the, Jerry, uh, Gerard, he, he wrote and produced and directed a couple of episodes. They really did give the actors a lot to, um, of input. And they let them, if they had an idea or whatever, they would always listen and they'd take it in. So it was great. It was well, great. It, it, for you as a, as a person involved in the production, it's much better to be able to participate in the process as opposed to just being the, uh, the meat puppet, go stand there, say this line. You exactly. Know. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, and so speaking of the uh, episode that you're referring to, let's uh, let everybody know about uh, what's going to be happening tonight. Yeah, um, we're going to show Darla Goes Ballistic tonight, so um, any of you who haven't seen it or just would like to see it again, um, and I'll have a little surprise for you guys tonight when you come, so come out. <laughs> and uh, after Darla Goes Ballistic, yes, I will be introduced to Superman for the Quest for Peace. So a chance to sit down and and then we're just going to get back and have some wine. That's right. And that's right. <laughs> Don't mind us. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a great opportunity, guys, to be able to sit and experience these things with the people who actually participated in the process. So uh, make it a point of checking that out. Check your programs. I believe it starts at 7 o'clock tonight. 7.30? 7.30? We'll I'm not sure. Check we'll, your programs. We'll double check the time. Yeah. But yes, make sure you check that out because it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's going to be, uh, and uh, go down to Artist Alley, get your tickets early because it will sell out. It's going to fill up.